Yeah man, some of Purple's my number plus beats. New Machina updates came out last week. I already did a video about the audio sampler in the software. Now let's cover it on the standalone as well. Whether you own the Machina Plus or the Mark III, you might want to learn how to do it from the hardware, you know what I'm saying, out in the wild. Okay, let's check them out. Of course, I'm gonna showing you how to do it. First step, connect your MIDI out to the MIDI in of whatever MIDI device you want to sample from. In this case, I'm using an actual MIDI cable. You could also connect it to USB MIDI if the device supports it. Next thing you want to do is go into settings, bump the jog wheel over to the MIDI tab right there and find your output devices because we want to send MIDI out from the machine and trigger something from the synthesizer. So from out from the machine and into the synthesizer. What we need to be looking for is the output devices right here. And right now, as I have my MIDI cable connected, that will be the Machine Plus MIDI 1 output. If you had a USB MIDI device connected to it right here, that is uh, supported, you should see that in this menu here. And what we need to do first is turn that on. And that's really all the setup we need to do before it. Let's pop this motherfucker on and head into our sampling menu. First, I wanna make sure that I'm getting some input here. Okay, let's turn the monitoring on so we know what is going on here. Make sure we got a nice output volume coming from out from the synthesizer. We don't want too low volume. Of course, we don't want it distortionalizing neither. What are we stealing from the Juno if not some retrotastic pads? Set the sound up however you want it. I think we're ready for the actual action. Change the recording mode to auto. This is our auto sampler. Number one, you need to figure out how long each sample needs to be. If it has a long tail, if the release is long, you might want to sample a little longer part of it and hold the note down. This is how long the machine is holding the note down. So this is now set to two seconds. That means one, two, that's what it's going to emulate and then sample until five seconds have passed. You need to be the judge of this. Estimate how long it takes for the sound to fade out after you let go of the key. For example, right here. See, it has a decay of about between one and a half, two seconds. Sampling five seconds of it should be good enough. If you have a really long tail, a really long release, for example, if we were to bump this up. Hey, we probably want to sample more than five seconds of that, you know what I'm saying? I would recommend for flexibility, you sample something with a short release because we can always change the envelopes in the actual sampler of the machine afterwards. So let's... have a relatively short tail. We can also auto detect the loop, which you'll see in a sec. And this means that we can extend the sound for however long we want it and then set a long release on it on it and it should sound essentially the same. One page to the right, we have our input source. This one, if you want to sample in stereo, external stereo is the way to go. I forgot to mention, of course, you have to plug your device into the inputs of the machine also. So my synthesizer here is connected from its output to the stereo input of the machine and our input source would then be external stereo. If we wanted to sample from the left or right, we could do it with external mono. More about that in a chapter about sampling in a machine course, Machine Noobs Mastery School. Internal would be if you're sampling something like a plugin from within machine. Here you would follow the same procedure except you would pick the plugin from the input source right there. We'll keep it as external stereo, especially important since there's a chorus on this sound right about around here. Next setting, we decide where do we want the machine to send our MIDI to. And remember, this is the MIDI output that we set up in the settings. Channel one, this may vary depending on which MIDI channel your synthesizer device is receiving MIDI on. In my case, we're good to go. Let's check them out. We have a couple more pages right about around here. Stride is how often you want to sample. Say I want to sample from C2 and five octaves up. So C6, that ought to cover a good range. If the stride was set to one here, we would sample every single key between the octaves of C2 up to C6. Boom, boom, boom. 
For absolute best quality of sampling, yes, you could do that. Most cases, especially with synthesizer sounds like this, it's not really necessary. Here we can decide to change the stride. The stride is how many keys it hops up before it samples another tone, another note. So uh, if I wanted to sample only two notes per octave, I could set the stride to six, which is half an octave. Extend setting means that the highest sample and the lowest sample will be stretched out across the keyboard. Velocity map page right here, there's a couple of things to keep track of. Right now you'll notice that the stride, if you try to twist it, it's not gonna do anything. That's because we don't have any range between the velocities. The maximum velocity we can set it to is 127 and the lowest is zero this is how hard you press the key and it, if you were to set it exactly like this zero 127 it would sample 127 times on each note defined in the previous step at various velocities so soft little harder little harder little harder little harder little it's a little bit overdriving in this case we don't need to do that we'll just set the velocity to the original setting but anyhow depending on how many velocities you want to sample at you can also set the stride and this is essentially the same thing how many keys do you want to stride before we sample another velocity so if to simplify it a little bit set the velocity to the low velocity to 100 and the high velocity to 110. If we set the stride to two, it would sample at velocity 100, at velocity 102, at velocity 104, 106, 108, and 110. I just want one velocity, so we're gonna set both of these to the same thing, and the stride, we're gonna keep it at one. Extend, that means that the highest note that we sample, I mean the highest velocity that we sample, it will be used for any velocities going above that. And the lowest one, it will extend it to any velocity going below the lowest velocity. Last page right about around here is where most of the automatic magic is happening. Finding loop, you like to turn that on in most cases. If you have ever sampled, multi-sampled, something that requires a lot of multi-sampling, you know that manually finding the loop points is a pain in the ass. If you're not familiar even with what a loop is, I will show you that visually once we have done the sampling because it's easier to visualize. But finding the loop points automatically, we definitely want to turn that on. We want to trim the silence that's just gonna cut any silent part of the sample off. Normalizing means pushing the volume up to the very ceiling as loud as it can be without distortionalizing or clipping. I like to keep that off because certain notes on certain synthesizer sounds can be perceived as louder or lower depending on which note you're playing. Better to solve that with a compressor or something like that. So I'm gonna keep that off and now we can work the magic or rather it can work the magic for us. All right, there we have. It slingshots us straight into the zone edit mode of the sampler. You would find it by pressing sampling. And if you're on record or edit, you'll find the zone page right there. It's mapped out the samples for us. So quickly explained. These regions are the samples that we have recorded and it's automatically mapped out for us. So you can see the stride here has been six keys, C2 up to A sharp, or what you might call it, et cetera. And it's taken the lowest notes and the highest notes in the samples and extended them. Now we can press keyboard and we can actually press it again if we want to hide it and still view our zone edit window. Let's go an octave down and we'll see that first this sample is being played all the way up until there. Six notes. Next sample is playing. It's a decent resolution. I would say it did a decent enough job sampling only two notes in an octave. So let me explain the loop points right about around here. First thing you see is the play range. This is the regular start and end points. But if you hop one page to the right here, you will see the loop settings. Now this is what it's automatically set up for you.
it detects which region should be looping. In this case, it turned out shit. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, especially if you have a sound like this with a declining amplitude. you'll have a more noticeable difference. In this case, it doesn't really matter. It's not that many samples to, to edit manually. So we can add some crossfade to it. Until we find it sounds all right. No nasty clicks and pops. This one sounds all right with some crossfade on it. Etc. Last thing I want to show you that I mentioned in the beginning of the video is that when you have a sample like this, you can go to the second page of the sampler out here in the plugin level and set the amplitude envelope up yourself. So if we wanted a longer release, it's better you control that afterwards. And that's about it. If you want to learn more about, for example, the sampler or any detail really from the machine, you should check out the Machine News Mastery School. You're looking for a chord inversion video. I'm not even going to do that. It's so simple. Just go into chords and fuck around with it. You know what I'm saying? I hope you learned something from this. It's called be used in different situations. Shout out to all my patrons, the people in the Discord, the black hole, weekly sample flip challenges. Join us for that shit right about around there. And, uh, Okay, bye-bye.